Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. And today I have with me my good friend, my mentor, and now for his second appearance on the Badass Direct Sales Mastery podcast, Alex Onderud. Now, if you haven't listened to his previous episode, go listen. But here's what I'm going to tell you about Alex. He is world renowned in the areas of leadership, communication, and human behavior. He has been brought in by some of the top coaching companies, organizations, and teams around the world to train their people on new and innovative perspectives of human performance, leadership, and communication. His mission is to create a world where leaders promote authenticity by adapting their communication and leadership to the needs of their people, creating and cultivating the highest potential for success. Welcome to the show, Alex. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh. I love talking to you. And I know we could totally geek out for hours and hours and hours about all the things. But we're going to do. I think we do geek out for hours and hours. It's something we do. It is something we do. We regularly hop on Zoom and have dinner together and just geek out over random stuff and share what we're doing in the world because that's how good of a friend and mentor you are. That I don't just talk to you for podcast stuff. We actually like have a friendship. (laughs) It's so cool. I love it. (laughs) So, and I'm, I am going to explain to the listener right now. I am getting over a viral thing. So, yes, if I sound a little different, a little bit like Kathleen Turner, you're not crazy. I mean, you might be. But if you were thinking I sound a little different, you're not wrong. So, Alex, tell me and tell our listeners, how did you get to where you are today in a quick nutshell if they didn't hear your previous episode? It's interesting. I actually started off working as an engineer for Boeing. I was really good at systems process, being able to identify I've always been able to read people, but I got really good at being able to work with people, get them to make the system work, and then get results. It was kind of one of those things that was like, they said no, send Alex, they'd say yes. And I got good at it. During that time, I got trained in NLP, psychology, uh, NLP being neurolinguistic programming. I got trained in NLP and psychology and uh, started doing therapy work, suicide, depression, PTSD, anxiety, and really working in the therapy world. And I worked with a woman who had a kid and she was, the kid was struggling. She said, thank you for the help. Can you help my 30 other kids? And she brought me in to work with her real estate team. Um, over the last 15 years, I had run a course called Direct Sales Magic, where I worked with over 50 different network marketing companies as a consultant, helping them on training, recruiting, retention, growth. I've worked with real estate. I've worked with casinos like MGM, banks like maybe Federal, Wells Fargo, variety of different organizations. Intel brought me in to do some work for them. But basically, my job now is to take the engineering side, but my understanding of people and put the two worlds together so that people can actually understand and see other people, like to be able to shake a hand and go, who are you? Oh, that is sexy right there. (laughs) I love that idea. No, seriously. I mean, because here's the thing. People don't do business with businesses. They do business with people. So if you can quickly read people to be able to figure out who they are, then you can have a better conversation, a deeper conversation, build better, faster rapport, right? So how is it that over time you've been doing this with people and teaching others how to do it? Well, it's interesting because my childhood, I had a lot of trauma. And with the trauma, I learned to read my environment because it was a safety mechanism. Mm -hmm. Somebody that introduced me to psychometric assessments like the DISC assessment, and all of a sudden I could put numbers to what I could already see. Mm -hmm. So when I had that, now all of a sudden all of my engineering started to come into play so I could build a system to teach other people so I could take what I did naturally and then teach people who couldn't do it how to do it. So I was working with a couple of leaders in a network marketing company, and they were looking at trying to grow. They were grabbing this 
person who they really wanted to recruit. They really wanted to work with them. And I asked just a couple of key questions. I said, okay, when you sit down, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, hey, I can tell that you tend to make decisions quickly and you like to move forward. And I want to make sure that we're able to take all the roadblocks out of the way. And sometimes there's some of the process that we need to do. And as best as we can, we're not going to let the red tape get in the way. What we're going to do is we're just going to expedite and move things through for you. How does that sound? And they're like, but it, like these people, they're so set. This is the process. This is what we're supposed to do. It made them so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I said, right, but say this to him and watch how he lights up. They said it, they have a conversation. I gave them some other things to say. And guys signed up. It was easy because it's all of a sudden it's like, yeah, that's what I want. And that's the leader I want. It's really about, you know, if you can see the other person and let them know, I see you and I'm going to show up the way you need me to, they trust you more. They're willing to work with you more. And so that's kind of how I built this thing was I shake someone's hand and tell them who they are. They're like, how did you do that? You just met me. I'm like, well, it's because it takes me 20 seconds, but I can teach you to do that too. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that it makes sense to me because I know you and I literally watched you build that rapport with somebody that quickly because you did it with me. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> it also it also helped. Let's be honest. It also helped that you came in as a as an introduction from my best friend, Virginia, who said, Jenny, meet Alex. Alex does this. And boom, we were like besties oh, in like perfect. 10 minutes. It was great. But it is amazing because when you can see somebody for who they are, let them know that you see them. They feel better connected to you. Right. Right. So I. I. Got a little girl. I'm a dad, single dad. I've got a three-year-old daughter. She is absolutely beautiful, amazing. My favorite thing in the world, when I say who's the best, she goes, me best, daddy. I might keep that your whole life, little girl. Yes. So I had no clue how to be a parent and I wanted to learn. So I hired a parenting coach and she started teaching me and having me read books. And I started learning about attachment theory. And all of a sudden I realized that's pretty much what I was doing with my leadership with a couple of tweaks. And so when I talk about leadership, I just want to be clear that as a direct sales rep, as a person who's out there, consultant going out and trying to talk to people, you are leading your clients, period. Like you're, you're not just selling, you're not just recruiting, like you are leading your clients to make a decision that's right for them. That's what you're trying to do. Yes. So in leadership, I found that in order to help somebody be successful, you need to have them feel safe and protected. But the challenge is you can't make someone feel safe if they don't feel seen because you can't see their threats. You don't know their world. You don't know where they're coming from. So the first step that most people miss is you have to first acknowledge their reality and help them feel safe by seeing where they are and letting them know they're okay right now. You accept them, which is the next step, because you can't protect somebody you don't accept. So the two missing pieces, it's not just safe and protected. You have to make them feel seen so they can feel safe. You have to make them feel accepted so they can feel protected because at that point, they'll follow your lead. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And I know my listeners have also heard Scott Conway talk about Ohana Way. So all of this fits really well in with the Ohana Way, right? Be an oasis, be the harmony piece, accept accept people for all their diversities and differences, right? Yeah. Love all of this. And it's it's totally true, right? Because I, for many, many years, part of the reason that DISC and Ohana fit so well with me and why I have attached myself to those two ways of, you know, teaching my clients and working with my clients, it's because for many, many years in the direct sales industry, I would hear people say, oh yeah, of course you can do that, Jenny. It's you, right? Like as if I have some magical superpowers, which I do. We do. But- <laughs> you do. It's been- it's- you do. As if I had some magical superpowers. But here's the thing. If I can do it, anybody can do it, right? Because I started at the same baseline as everybody else. Because when I was born, I couldn't even speak English and neither could they. So I learned how to do this, which means anybody can learn how to do this. This is not something that is unknown and not out there. It's something that is knowable. It's just I through. So you learned how to read people through trauma. I learned how to read people because I grew up in the military and I had 30 seconds to gauge whether or not this new person in my life was going to be a good friend for the next six months, two years, three years before we parted ways again because I had gotten burned by not good friends, crazy people, whatever before. So I got really good at reading people. I didn't know that that's what I was doing. 
but it's something that came up with all of this. So all of this is learnable because I learned how to do it. I just didn't know how to teach somebody how to do it until I met you. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. It's like a lot of people when they talk about things like we, we talk about disc, it's only one aspect of what we talk about all the right. time. But like disc, for instance, most people say it's a fixed thing. It stays the same and you're one letter and that's just not how it works. It, there's a handful of people I know that understand disc at the level you do. And so if people haven't had a chance to actually sit down, run a profile with you, do a reading with you, they're missing out because you're able to help people understand where people are on the spectrum of all four categories, how to capitalize on their strengths, what their weaknesses are, how to mitigate their weaknesses, and how to use their strengths to be able to better sell their people and to be able to recruit people. And like being able to take somebody who hasn't ever really had that opportunity to dive into who they are and to sit with you and to be able to break that down. Like you've gotten so skilled at it and to hear a lot of the stories about the people you've worked with and the success they've had, it's because you've taken the time to put the effort in to understand the spectrums and really build that skill. And it, it is such a valuable skill to have, to be able to read people and to be able to help them guide and see, okay, here's where your strength is. Here's where your weakness is. And as a, someone who's out there selling, being able to see that in a potential client, being able to go, okay, they're hesitant to take action and make a purchase. And if I want them to make a purchase, I need to make them feel safe or they're going to make a quick decision. So I need to move fast to keep up with this person, like to be able to understand that, to know if you're somebody they need to talk to and be social, if they care about their family, do they care about what's in it for them? Like understanding all of these different aspects is going to make you better as a salesperson. And it's not about being able to read a profile. It's about being able to shake someone's hand and go with respect to your people. Is it overly important to you that you take care of your people or are your people just somebody who you have? And like, there's not an intrinsic motivator for it. Like, do you operate right. out of what's in it for me or do you operate out of responsibility because you do it because you're supposed to? Like, there's different spectrums. And if you can find those two points of where they are, you can be a better salesperson. You can be a better leader. You can be a better spouse. You can be a better father. You can be a better mother. You can be like you can be a better person in how you relate to others because when you understand them, you right. understand the interaction. Does, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, yeah. it well, of course it makes sense to me. <laughs> it makes sense to you. Right. I guess I'm asking the audience who isn't actually yeah. able to respond. Does that make sense? It's a natural yeah. thing for me. Exactly. No, and that's a good thing. And you know, to your point, Alex, for those who are listening right now who haven't taken the disc assessment with me badassdirectsalesmastery.com forward slash free disc, D-I-S-C, disc. So the, the link is in the show notes, guys. So, but moving on, the way I explain disc when I'm talking to people is the reason why you why somebody wants to take the disc for themselves, to understand themselves, is because the disc, to me, is a little bit like GPS, right? You have to know your starting point, and your starting point is you. Who are you? Where are you starting from? So the way that I show up in the world right now, according to my most recent disc profile, which I just took last week on my Marketers Cruise cruise ship to make sure that the assessment would actually work while we were on the cruise, is I'm a 99I, 99D. So I'm an ID. I know I'm an ID in that order because I always tested a 99I. That is my primary because I love people. I'm an inducer influencer. It's what I love to do. My D is high right now because I'm in get shit done fast mode. And so, you know, I, I get shit done and I like to have fun. That's me. I know my listener who's been listening to me for a while is totally shocked at that. But that's my starting point. But I have to know that in order to know when I'm talking to someone else, once I figure out who they are, what do I need to tone down, turn up, bring around in order to let them feel seen, right? So once I figure out that somebody is a high S, then I'm literally slowing down my pace in order to have a conversation with them because I know that that's what they need. Right, and it's interesting because like the first level, you look at the DISC, you look at the different personalities. So let's just take D for instance, the 99D, and it's like they move quickly for results. That's what they're focused on. They're driven to keep moving. It's mm -hmm. not about problems, decisiveness, they're decisive because they want to keep moving. They're aggressive because they want to keep moving. They don't like problems because they want to keep moving. Like, it's all about movement. But you test as a 99D. The next level, the deeper level of understanding is actually that from a true disc perspective, you're a low D, not a high D. 
you're going to test as a high D, you're going to show up as a high D. But the thing is, it's not that you're quick to make decisions and that you're following your gut. You actually have learned to analyze information quickly. So you're actually making intentional decisions about how to move forward fast. You're just doing it faster than most people can. So you're going to test as a high D, but you need the information. You need all the information quickly in a succinct way so that you can assimilate it, make your decision and move forward. So yes, the speed's important and that's the surface level and the next level down is to go, right, but does she, is she making gut decisions or intentional decisions? Because that's another level of that high D, low D. And as a low D, you're intentional in making your decisions. You're just fast at it. So you're displaying mm. two different qualities of the same spectrum. Yeah. Woo! Next level, right. y'all. Next right. level. Woo! Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I think that as, as people begin to really understand this, because, I mean, one of the things I like to show people is, you know, when they want proof that disc changes, I show them mine, right? My first one that I ever took was in June of 2020, right in the middle of COVID. You know, I was, my I has always been a 99, but my D was very, was lower, but my S was at an 87. That's the highest it's ever been because I was all about helping support others because I was helping them in survival mode. Like, how do I make it through this? Right. right. Whereas now my S I don't think has tested above a 67 or a 70, you know, so it's dropped considerably because I don't have to I, I, I don't feel I have to support people in that way as at such a high level. It's now it's about getting results. Right. Yep. So it's, it's also on speed. It's moving it up. It's being right. spontaneous, being able to make a shift. It's being a little bit more malleable and changing yeah. with the market and changing with the environment. Exactly. Big time, big time. So Alex, I could talk with you on this forever, but here's what's really fun and cool. So we're going to end the interview now. And Alex is now going to do a 20 minute training. We're going to go into the Badass Direct Sales Moms and Dads group on Facebook. And that training is going to live there. So if you have not joined the Badass Direct Sales Moms and Dads group on Facebook, please go do so because Alex's training is going to be here for a few weeks, and then it will move into the Badass Direct Sales Mastery community forever for those who would like to be a member of our community of podcast listeners and have access to all the trainings that our amazing experts like Alex are going to do. So Alex, I want to thank you for being on the show, but we're going to stop this recording and hop into the other one. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. All right, Badass Crew, you know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another Badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to BadassDirectSalesMastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.